Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the video. You're probably like me and wondering what these RODI systems or reverse osmosis filters are and are they any good? And I decided since I make my own CO2 with the DIY CO2 kits, check the channel if you want to see one of those, I was going to try and do RO water at home. So we bought one of these kits off of Amazon for 70 bucks and here it is. This is the Aquatic Life RO Buddy. This is the 50 gallon per day unit. They do make a 100 gallon per day unit if you want. Let's uh, open this up here, see what we got. Quick disclaimer, I have never worked with one of these systems before. If you like this, there will be a link in the description and uh, I am an Amazon affiliate. So if you do click that link, I get a couple of pennies for that. And I appreciate if you do that. Let's set it up here. I'm a noob, oh, might make some mistakes. Let's figure it out. There were some reviews that said these units leak, right? Now for my application, I'm gonna do it probably in the tub or sink. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue if it does leak, but uh, let's set her up and find out, huh? All right, so here's what we get in the box here. This is your main unit here. Uh, I've done a little bit of research on these. This is your inlet. So it says right there, your supply. That goes into your sediment filter, comes down around here and goes into your carbon filter. Then it goes into this RO chamber, which we have to put a filter in. And then it comes out the bottom and your wastewater is over here, this little guy. I have a four filter unit. So we're gonna be adding another filter, which should be, should be in here. So I got an RODI unit, which is a deionization filter. If you were using this to make drinking water or purify your city tap water, something like that, do not get the ionization or deionization filter. Uh, that's not suitable for drinking. And there's a big warning about RO systems. Do not use the deionization filter if you're going to drink it. So wanted to put that disclaimer in there. We're using it for aquarium water, so we want it deionized. All right, and the other stuff here, we got some lime. This is our actual RO membrane. And uh, little connectors here. This goes to like your hoses or your faucets. Yep, and looks like instructions in here. With both filtered water and the wastewater lines in the drain, turn on the water supply. This will flush the filter cartridge. Flush it for five minutes or until the water from both lines runs clear. So what they're telling me to do here is hook up the supply hook up a line here that's gonna come out of the empty RO chamber um, and we're flushing this carbon filter because if you don't flush these carbon filters before you put your RO membrane in there, it will shorten the life of your RO membrane. And you don't wanna do that because I think that's the most expensive part of the kit. So let's uh, get some lines on here and then we'll um, hook her up and I'll see you at the sink. Thought I would show you how these lines go in here first, just in case you want to see. So remove your little safety clip, All right? This is a plug. We're going to pull the plug out. This is a, okay, maybe not hard to do this with one hand. There we go. This is just a, a little cat plug for shipping. Do not lose this little clip. You need this. Take your hose. Your hose goes in and it'll stop at the first little spot here. When it stops, it's not all the way in. There's an O-ring in there. You gotta push further there to what they call the second stop. And you'll feel it kind of hit the bottom of the, the filter or the cartridge. And then take your little blue clip and that locks the line in there, supposedly. I've never used these before. We're about to figure it out. Okay, welcome to outside because none of my faucets are gonna work <laughs> for this system. But that's okay. We can make water outside and it actually makes it easy because the wastewater that has to drip out can just drip out on the ground. So we don't have to worry about getting water all over the house and having the wife mad at me. So we're over here at the hose and this is a little bit easier because all we got to do is just screw this guy right onto the hose. Now you could do it directly to the faucet. I just think it's going to be easier for me to just do it right here on the hose, finger tight. So again, to illustrate what I've done here, this is the line that the water is going to come out of the filter. There's no RO filter in here. It's just the cavity. Then this is your wastewater line and then your supply line at the top. So we're going to just set this guy down right here like so. So we just got all of our supply line plugged in here. And uh, let's just turn it on. Water should come out of both of these, the waste and the 
uh, actual RO line. Now my hose leaks, so don't mind that. Although I want to see if this unit leaks, so we're going to move him over here. I hear water gurgling. We got water coming out of this line. This is the RO line. We should get water out of the waste line here. Oh, there it comes. Some water starting to drip out of this line. Now it says just let this run for about five minutes because we want to flush this carbon cartridge. I don't have the water like on real super strong. There's a PSI limit to the system here, but I don't know what my water pressure is here. I haven't checked it. So, I mean, it's working fine at this point. Okay, it's been five minutes. I'm sure we're, we're flushed. It's been clear water instructions say run until the water's clear. We were clear almost instantly. I don't see any leaks yet. Uh, there is a little water on here, but that's because I had it under this drip to start. Let's shut this off here and put the RO filter in. Okay, to get the filter in, we've got to take this line off of the top here. Then we can remove the lid for the RO chamber. RO filter goes in with this rubber gasket up towards the cap. Slide it into the chamber. And then push down until it's fully seated. See how it stopped and then it went a little further? It should be flush at the top just like these lines. Make sure everything is seated properly. I don't know how tight it's supposed to be, but it kind of stopped. There's a little wrench that you can use as well, but I think we're gonna be good there. So before I turn the water on, I read the instructions and it says that these RO membranes have a preservative in them to, I guess, keep them from drying out or something. Anyway, you have to flush that preservative out for 30 minutes. So we're gonna see now what kind of pressure it takes to get an RO drip. I don't know how fast 50 gallons a day is. I'm assuming it's just like drip, 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 drip out of the RO filter, but let's see. Activate inlet water. There was a warning in the instructions about too much pressure. Oh, it also said on the instructions, flush the RO filter without the deionizing filter on it for 30 minutes if you have a deionizing filter, which we do. So we're just flushing this like so. There, there we go. We're getting some drips here. Ah, all right, now we're trickling. I don't see any leaks. There's nothing leaking out of this line, nothing leaking here. Oh, there's a little tag on here, by the way, to show you how this works. No leak in here, no leak in there or here, no leak on the supply, but I got no leaks around the cap here. So, so far so good. Now people say these units are leaking all over their house and stuff. I don't see any issue with it. They maybe just don't have these connections proper in here and that's why it's leaking. That's my guess. A lot of times people will leave a review not knowing they did something wrong and then they smash the product saying, oh, it's garbage when it was really your fault. We're going to let this run for 30 minutes. I went to check my watch and I don't have my watch on, but uh, 30 minutes and then we'll be back, finish up this install and actually make some RO water. As we come and take a look here, though, this looks about right. You know, wastewater is a steady stream here. And this is what I would expect an RO system to be doing. Just kind of drip, 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 drip. So let's go ahead and shut this off here. And now we're gonna install our deionization filter. Oh yeah, there you go, look at that. Okay, now we're gonna have to take our clip out of here, remove this plug. All right, pull the plug out. And when you cut this tube and you wanna make sure that you cut it perfect 90 degree angle there so that it butts up nicely to the fitting. All right, in you go. Don't forget the blue clip. Now we're gonna need a line from here, which is our final out, and that's gonna go in our jug over there. If you're unsure if you're all the way in on this from my playing with this here, just push down like pretty dang hard, and if it don't go anymore, you're probably good. Okay, and we are set up. Here's our final output, our wastewater out, which can just drip because I have a plan to mount this thing, and then our inlet here for the hose. We're good. Now all I got to do is double check the instructions one more time and just make sure we don't have to flush the deionization filter before we actually start capturing RO water. Let me check that and I'll be right back. All right, per the instructions here, we do not need to 
pre-flush the deionization filter, though I will for like just a little bit. All right, let's uh, turn the system on here and see what happens. You know, I was just thinking too that maybe the people that said the system leaks, maybe they were running just wide open faucet and uh, too much pressure. That could have been it. Read your instructions, guys. I know, guys, men don't like to read instructions, but come on, read your instructions. Okay, we're all full up there. We should be getting RO water out of here pretty soon. And there it is. All right, we've been flushing this for a little bit. Let's uh, grab our bottle over here. All right, I've got my jug here and this hole is already drilled out because I use this jug to actually fill my aquariums by putting a hose on the end of this thing. And this little line is gonna fit just perfect, nice and tight in there. I don't want debris and ants and bugs and stuff. Well, uh, an ant is a bug, right? Uh, uh, debris and ants or debris and bugs. I don't want to get in this since I'm doing this outside. So we want nice tight seals here. Let's see if I can do this one handed. All right, we're making water. Okay, we're supposed to be making RO water. So before you click off this video, let's do one more thing. Let's test it and see if we really are at zero or one TDS which is what RO water should be at. Let's go get our little test thingy and a cup and we'll find out. Let's get some RO here. Now, I forgot to mention, there is a big warning, even on page one it says refer to this page here, about chloramines. If you live in an area where they use chloramines instead of chlorine to um, disinfect the water, your tap water, uh, you have to get a special filter because chloramines will eat the membrane of the RO filter, it says, and uh, and you won't make RO water. It'll just damage it. So I checked the water report, and they use chlorine, so I should be good to go. Here's our TDI, TDI, T TDS meter. All right, moment of truth here. Do we have RO water? Well, looky there, guys. She works zero ppm that's awesome zero ppm ro water and i'm gonna do a chlorine test and a ph test and see what this comes out to i know there's not going to be any ammonia nitrates or nitrites in there so i'm just going to do ph and chlorine chlorine maybe you guys can see that against the white sink absolutely zippo nada no chlorine pH 6 to 6.4, which from my experience is about right for RO water. The RO water I get from the aquarium store is a very low pH as well. Well, not very low, but in the sixes. So yeah, between 6 and 6.4, we'll call it 6.2. Quick Google search shows that the pH of RO water being slightly acidic should be between 6 and 6.5. So we are right there with those numbers. All right, well, there you have it. What do you think? Was it worth it? I mean, 70 bucks, making RO water at home, pretty simple to install. I could have done it in like 15 minutes max if I wasn't filming. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a pretty good value for $70. Again, there's going to be a link in the description that'll take you to my Amazon affiliate link. So again, if you click it and you buy one of these systems, click the link in the description to help me out. It'll save you time taking you right to that little link on Amazon. And then you can just hit uh, put in cart from there and it should pay me, I think is how it works. I don't know, never been paid yet. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, especially if you have a lot of tanks that you're using RO water for. Uh, for me, it's mainly for the shrimp tank, but I'm gonna start using RO in my other tanks too. Um, can help with keeping your parameters in check. So I think it's pretty cool. My system didn't leak, so I don't know. Well, there's a lot of reviews that say these systems leak. Mine didn't leak. And the calculation at 50 gallons per day, 50 divided by 24 is roughly 2.1 or 2.01. So two gallons per hour, not too bad, right? So we're going to let it fill up, and then I'm going to do some water changes. I appreciate you guys watching the video. This is a new channel still, so if you wouldn't mind subscribing for me to help get us to our monetization, I would appreciate that. And if you like all this kind of content, you might want to subscribe anyway. So more fish tank stuff coming at you. Appreciate you watching. You totally forgot to tell them that if they like this content, they might like one of these other videos down here on the screen. I mean, man, you got to stop messing up like that, dude.
check out one of these videos if you like this content.